So welcome back to Room 101 and Celtic are on the road again. This time down to Ayrshire for the old trip to face Championship winners Kilmarnock at Rugby Park. I am absolutely delighted to but welcome back to the show after a couple of years away, Craig Anderson to help me chat with Kelly. Well, Craig, how are you, pal? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me on again. It's always, always good fun. Always a delight, mate. Always a delight. How was the lower leagues then? Did you have a good good fun? Yeah, so it was my, I mean, it was the first time. Kelly had been in the Premiership ever since kind of started going, so it was the first time. We weren't very good last season. Like, it, it wasn't a good league. So, you know, that way you think, you know, you'll go down and you're going to, you know, be winning 4 nothing every week. And, mm-hmm. you know, or, or not, you know, not every week, but a lot of games. We didn't really have a lot of that. There was a lot of kind of tight wins. And it wasn't, it wasn't a super exciting season, but... We made up for that, I guess. The way the way we won it in the last day was particularly good. On the second last game, you know, the last minute winner, you couldn't kind of beat that in front of a kind of sellout crowd. So, at the very least, we we had a moment. And you also you also had the kind of like see when these teams go down as you say and have these great seasons with the combat and all the, the stadiums falling and all that. But obviously, as we're going to get into Kilmarnock season was kind of up and down and kind of with the Tommy Wright leaving and stuff like that. And you throw in the fact that everybody else wanted our broth. <laughs> I mean, everybody's going, come on, our broth. So, so didn't it help you? Were like the bad guys in the group with you? <laughs> exactly, but it's. I think I think it, that was quite. That was quite. You probably probably gave us a wee feeling how how you 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 guys normally feel every week when everyone wants you to lose every week. Everybody wants uh, you to lose. Aye, aye. Um, but no, it was good. I mean, our that's both, when you start learning to go. <laughs> <laughs> our, our both were probably better than us, to be honest. I, I think they were a better team than us for most of the season. Um, they, they lost fewer games, but they just had a few too many draws. And when it came to it, I think we we were able to strengthen. We were able to throw money at it in January in a way that they weren't basically, and and that's what it boiled down to. We brought in Lafferty, scored a lot of goals, and we brought in Ash Taylor at centre back, and the two of them probably changed the season so in our favour. Mm-hmm. Right, but that's cool. Like like I said to you beforehand, I usually just fly through the summary and I kind of poke at things, but we'll have a proper good look at your last season and get your feelings about it and stuff because, like you said. You guys have been in the Premier League since 1993 or 92, do you know what I mean, since yeah. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Burns brought you up, and I remember that, so let's be brutally honest, but it doesn't matter what you think, come on, come on, it's a Premier League team, so for you, it was a case of get your ass back up as soon as possible, eh? and bring your, your pitch with you. <laughs> <laughs> right, yep. before, before we crack on, Craig, um, just this week you've started a, a Twitter I would call it a campaign, and it was something I was delighted to see, it, and I was delighted to put my back and, and the homeboys back and behind it. And I really, I, I'm actually this week, I'm, I'm purposely going to start promoting it a good bit because you need, to, we need to get that thing of thousands and thousands of people following it. So it's um, 20s plenty, something I'm on board with. But tell me a bit about it and why you've kind of pushed it. Hey, well, I mean, I, I go to. Well, I used to go to a lot of away games. I've got got a wee one now, so it's maybe a wee bit a wee bit fewer of them. But last season we were on the championship. We were maybe paying twenty quid most weeks, and that's probably quite a lot for championship football. But I think coming back up, you really noticed the change in price. And I think even if you hadn't been, I think fans this season have noticed it. Our tickets when we the year we got relegated, or the year before with COVID, were twenty quid. That's gone up to twenty five quid for every other game, and it's thirty quid when we're playing Rangers and Celtic, which for me, it's far too high. And then I looked, we're playing Ross County's um, the next away game we've got, 28 mm-hmm. quid for a ticket for that. And you start looking and thinking, I, I, I mean, I used to pay 20, yeah, 20 quid was roughly what you expected to pay. It's just gone really sky high very quickly. And given what else is going on in the world, it feels like clubs are, or fans are just not going to be able to afford that. And I think... Most of the time, you know, people have a moan sometimes about certain away supports and, and you know, um, I just think you need to have them there. The type of, our game is not a TV sport, it's a sport for people to go to and, and that's a big mm-hmm. selling point of, of our league. And if you price people out of going, I mean, home fans will buy their season tickets, right? And, and you'll probably still get good home numbers, at least a bit. If you start charging people too much money to go to away games, the atmosphere is going to go and... I don't think it's a good thing, and you're you're losing future fans. You're losing people who will just start watching English football on the telly, or will just start exactly. going to the, the exactly. lower leagues. You know. Mhm, mhm. You 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 you'll even lose fans to junior football. Oh, 
what was junior football and stuff like that, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I've had my spell in junior football and I fucking loved it, man. And especially doing your way, the amount of fucking top quality here. So exactly. uh, junior um, low league football you've got doing there. I was talking to Kenny, the SLO for Ross County last week, and, and pretty much about this. So it was it was mental that your thing started this week after I was talking about it. So it, all my usual listeners apologise. I'm basically going to say what I said last week. But we've got to get to a point where we fill the stands, right? And and obviously I'm a Celtic fan, and you can you you're on Twitter, so you see the nonsense, the, the very selfish attitudes of Celtic fans, which is fair. There's a football fans, and they think about themselves. But I want grounds totally full. I want every ground. I like Kilmarnock to be full of Kilmarnock fans, and we come up and we have a sing at each other, and it's great. This is what football is about. But we're kind of, in my opinion, we're selling an arse over tip. We're selling it to Sky on the premise of give us money so we can get better instead of us getting better and then going to Sky he's a lot of money because we've fucking got something special here you know what I mean and as you say start being good to us because we'll fucking be good to you back if, you, if we save money on the tickets we'll give back to the clubs in some other way you know what I mean exactly so, and I think it's always this like I've I've never mind. I guess it's probably selfish. I've never minded the fact that it was maybe a couple of quid extra when when Celtic or Rangers came to play us because I think that when it was when it was twenty quid and then it was you know twenty two quid for those games. You're like, well, do you know what? There's probably a wee bit extra cost to the club for these games. More more steward and more of that. But the more I think about it, I'm like that. That's fine for me to say because I'm not the one paying it. But as well as that, it's now going. You know, it's not it's not just a wee bit. It's an extra five or it's thirty quid for a ticket. How many Kelly fans? Imagine you're a Kelly fan, and, and we've made a big thing of, of only selling one stand now, and we want to fill that with mm. our own supporters, and that's, as you said, that, that's great, that's what we should be doing. But mm. you then say, well, we've got 5,000-ish season ticket holders, we've got a few more thousand seats to sell. Who's paying 30 quid to come and watch a game of football when it's on the telly? It doesn't... So, so yeah, I think it's, it's try and move on from that attitude of fans, and that's fans of every club. I mean, it's not as every club being just yeah, money, money, cash cows to squeeze every penny out of and, and trying to say, not I mean, not so much Celtic coming down in Kilmarnock, it's not such a big trip, but if you're going to Dingwall, that's a lot, it's a lot of money to get there. And then you're being told at the end when you get there, right, and here's another 30 quid for a ticket. It's just... Well, you're coming from Kilmarnock Dingwall, right? So we were, I'm on a committee in my supporters club and our bus prices are going up every year. Exactly, yeah. Like, our bus prices are going up, and you're going to, so you're going to get that money back. Your ticket prices are going up. Everything else is going up. What's going to, what's going to go first? It's, it really is coming down to you fucking heat your house or do you go to FIPA? And FIPA's gone. So FIPA's kind of go to, it's, it's almost as if they're, they're just lump knowing it. They're kind of just, everybody else is putting everything up. We'll fucking put it up as well. And kind of, Instead of being for us, that, that's what they were, that's your local team. I mean, that's your club. They should be looking after you. But but good luck with that. Um, I'm, like I say, I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it big time this week. I'm going to, anybody I've spoke to on this, I'm going to be saying, right, lads, get this fire the boot. Because that should be thousands and thousands of people should be following that account. Obviously, a pain in your ass for you, but... Well, I, I, mean, I wouldn't have set it up if I didn't, you know, I, I'm, I am someone who when I get my teeth into something I want to keep going with it, Good. so fingers crossed we'll, we'll get a wee bit of traction and, you know, at least, Good man. I, I mean, I don't I don't know how likely it is that clubs are going to go, oh yeah, do you know what, he's talking sense, but if you can at least just make it something to be talked about, it just puts a wee bit of, you know, brings it to the, brings it to the front of the discussion, I think that's the main mm-hmm. point. Well, I, I dare say it's been spoke about itself, but I've actually put myself down for the we do these kind of fan meeting things at Celtic Park, and and uh, there's a couple of guys I know like um, the wee boy McGinn. If it's if he, the ninety minute cynic goes, a good guy, and he he kind of feeds back. But there'll be something I'll be going and going right. Why are we no, are we talking about this? Is this something we're talking about? Do you know what I mean? Because it's... But, but that's it. You've got my support anyway. Right. On to last season, right? So, 
Uh, he started, like I say, he started the season in Championship for the first time since 1983. The relegation playoff to Dundee, demoting the side since Tommy Burns was manager. Uh, Tommy Wright replaced Alec Dyer in February of the previous season, and he took his first full pre-season with the club. Massive turnover over in squad, 22 players out, 19 players in. Guys like Gary Dicker, Alan Power, Kyle Lafferty all leaving. How were you feeling last summer then? I mean, you'd obviously been disappointed, but did you have that? Right, let's go and get back and date properly. Aye, I mean, I think originally when we went down, I thought it might take a wee while to come back because you know it, it took Hibs a wee while, it took Dundee United a wee while. We're not as big a club as that, but then you started to look at the league and you started to think, you know what, there's nobody else there. There's a, a big threat. Um, you know, Partick Thistle would just come up. You thought maybe them, and apart from that, I was like, you know what, I think I think we should be favourites. Tommy Wright had just come in. He'd only been in since February, so I didn't blame him for the relegation. He, he could have kept us up. I think there, there, it wasn't entirely blameless, but he came in almost immediately after the window was shut, so he couldn't, you know, strengthen the squad, any of that sort of stuff. So it was mainly like, you know what, give the guy a chance. You knew he'd, he'd been successful before. Mm-hmm. He built a brand new squad, and you, I thought at the start of the season, yeah, we're, we're going to win this. Um, and, we, um, and we did, but it, it was less easy than, than I thought it would be. Longer than you thought, I. <laughs> right, so League, League Cup, uh, fair to say it never kicked off well. Uh, a 2-0 win on the 10th of July was overturned and awarded to Esco Bride after su- substitute Daniel Anderson, who came on, come on uh, as a sub, had a one-match ban from last season with Rave Rovers, which still had to be served. So... But the team recovered and wins over Clyde, a penalty win over Morton and a 2-1 win over Stranra was enough to take Kelly through in top spot. Two points more than Stranra and Morton. However, drawn against Hibs at Easter Road and Kelly fell out of the cup after a 2-0 defeat. So, league-wise, it wasn't a bad start. 12 games in, eight wins, two draws, two defeats. Left Kelly in top spot, two points over Inverness Cali. So at this point, it's going fine. Right? You, you, league Cup's a bit of a disappointment, but Alas, the League Cup isn't your aim as much as we all like getting the Cup finals. I suppose you guys are just wanting to go up. Um, however, four losses from five, all 1 0 defeats to Thistle, Umbroath, Inverness, and Wraith Rovers saw Kelly host Dunfermline Athletic on the 18th of December in fourth place. With the game at 1 8, the, the tie was abandoned due to fog, and one hour later, Tommy Wright was punted. <laughs> <laughs> I rem- see Dan in my research, I remember that and I just started laughing. I was like, that was madness. Yeah. What was your um, feeling then? Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think the time was up. I think the time was up just before that with the, ga- the Wraith Rovers game you mentioned. Um, some of our fans were giving Wright a bit of stick and I think he, he kind of made a gesture to the supporters, a, a give the fingers or something. Right. And I right. think at that point, folk were like, right, this guy, this is this is over. They, they'd obviously kept him on. That didn't fail the game. I can't remember, the, we either went 1-0 up and then they pegged us back really quickly or vice versa, but there was only about half an hour left when it got fogged off and it didn't really look like we, like we were the better team, but we weren't definitely going to win. And it was just felt like another one of these. And, and those four teams you mentioned uh, that, that beat us in those four games were the, were the top four. They were the other teams that we were yeah. buying up the yeah. top of the table with. The reason we won the league ultimately and... and Almost every game against the bottom half, we won. I mean, I think we, we lost a game, you'll probably come on to mention it to air, which wasn't the best. But mm-hmm. apart from that, we pretty much won nearly every other game um, against the, the bottom half teams. Record against the top half wasn't great. And, and it was those four defeats, as you say. You start looking, you're like, these are the teams that we should be, you know, sending a message out by getting results against and we're losing to them all. It wasn't a good sign. And I think, yeah, the, the time was up. It was just... What, what happened is Tommy Wright, and, and I still think he's a good manager, I don't think, I think he can still, I, I don't, you know, folk will say oh, he's terrible because of what happened. He's a manager who's better suited to, to be mid-table, to fight and, you know, not, not having to win every week. And we almost played like that, we almost played like a mid-table team, but when you're trying to win a league, that's not really great. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I think the time was well and truly up by then. And, and unlike the previous year, he mentioned Alex Dyer leaving February, they made the decision at the wrong time because Wright didn't have the chance that season, the relegation season, to to go and have his own window. They yeah. were decisive this time. They did it in December and that gave the new manager the January window, which which ultimately was what made the difference. So you, you didn't actually appoint a new manager to the 4th of January when uh, former Aberdeen manager Derek McInnes was appointed. But 
During that period, you oversaw a decent return to form. Three wins and two draws, including a big 1-0 win over Inverness on the 29th of January. A goal by the since-returned Kyle Laffery, enough to take the points, which put Kelly into second and one point off his surprise leaders are both. Um, uh, a 2-1 Extra time defeat to Dundee United in the middle of that run showed that some work had to be done. That was in the Scottish Cup. So a 1-0 defeat to Abroath in the next match was followed by, I'd imagine, a very sore 2-1 home derby loss to Air United. You must have been, at this point, your arse must have been... <laughs> that, <laughs> that was the first time. I, I Even though we've been doing pretty poorly, I was still saying, Do you know what, we'll, we, will, we will win this, we will win this. That was the first time I thought, you know what, we've not got a chance here. We went up to our broth um, the Friday night and, and were terrible. Got beat 1-0. Um, game pro- probably should have finished 0-0, but they were the better team. So uh, you lost that. Home to the United, we went 1-0 up early on. And you think, right, this is us kind of starting to get on it. And then the, the arse did fall out. They felt we, we, for some reason, went to a back three. when um, we, we, They equalised, but we were still the better team. For some reason, they went to a back three and... Just it, it just totally didn't work. They took control of the game. Kerr Ker McEnroy, who we've since gone on to sign, uh, ran the show, and uh, and they scored. And you know, at that point, I thought we we are getting too far back. I think our bros either conceded, but I think it, I think they scored the last minute equaliser against Hamilton the same night. They just extended that lead, and I thought, you know what, we are probably not catching them here because we we were basically looking. I think like about ten games to go, and you're thinking, you know, we're probably going to have to win seven or eight of these, and I didn't see it happening. Wow, that's that's mental, that's mental. Um, however, from afar, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, McInnes' experience kind of came to the fore the next nine games. Seven wins and two draws took Kelly back to the top, a four-point lead, and set up a massive tie against Inverness. A 2-1 defeat allowed Arbroath to claw the lead back to one point, with both teams due to meet on the penultimate day of the season. A massive 2-1 victory for the home side, despite going down uh, 1-0 in the ninth minute. A 78th minute Ash Taylor goal pulled it back, only for Blair Alston's 89th minute winner to take the title and break our bros' hearts. Tell me about that, that sounds brilliant. I, I didn't, and, and again, I remember sitting there going, fucking hell, man, look at that. I think we we've had we get stick sometimes because usually when killer games are on the telly, it's, it's against Rangers or Celtic. Home fans don't always turn out in big numbers for those games. Mm-hmm. It seems quiet. It seems like we don't have, you know, the atmosphere there. And okay, yeah, occasionally when we get the wins and, and those wins against Rangers in the in the couple of seasons before, and you know, with Steve Clark and all that, it was noisy. But that was that was about the noisiest I've heard the stadium in a very long time. Um, went behind the first half performance that night was terrible, but then the second half we came out and, and we battled them. Um, and it felt like it wasn't coming because it was, as you say, 75th minute before it, it came for a set piece. And then we were, you know, it was shot after shot. Their keeper was just saving everything. And then it just came to the last minute. And, and yeah, it was just that last one. And, and yeah, I've not heard a noise like it. And I think it was nice for the <laughs> country to see rugby park like that because you yeah, normally, mm-hmm. normally they're, they're not used to, to seeing that. And, you know, that was a, at the home end was sold out for that game. Um, and yeah, they, they obviously had a big away support. I think a lot of neutrals would have been there, and a lot of the kind of you know the Dundee Dundee club fans would have been in in the away end kind of as well. Um, kind of that maybe being their second team, but it was it was an incredible night, and it was the night that made the whole season. Because as I said, it, all all the, the season I'll be remembered for is, is three wins against there, um, in in the derbies obviously, and then um, that that last minute winner. Cause, uh-huh. It was well, yeah an amazing moment because I'll probably not I'll, I'll hope I mean I hope I, I shouldn't say I hope we don't I don't ever see us win a league again because that sounds terrible. Obviously I'd want us to win the top flight, but it's unlikely. I might never see us win a, a league title again because we I'd hope we don't get relegated again. Do you know what I mean? Um, so <laughs> to be able to, to be able to say that you were there, you you saw that um, you know it's it's quite impressive and I've I've seen us win the, the two cup competitions and now I can say at least I've seen us win a league even if it's not. The one everyone wants to win. It's still the old trophy, though, isn't it, man? Exactly. That's the same trophy as lifted by Selling Angels, aye, aye. No, I mean, like you said, if you're going to have this shitty kind of season where you eventually get to your goal and however happy you are, to, to get a moment like that to win it, 
is that's fatter. That's what we're all into, and that's I can. And I remember sitting watching. I think I watched it just through the BBC watching the scores. And I was like, fucking hell, I bet you that's bumping. So the league season finished with a one-one draw with Rafe Rovers, and Command lifted the famous old Scottish Championship trophy. Not to forget the Scottish Challenge Cup wins over Falkirk, Queens Park, Hamilton Aikies before the turn of the year, set up a match meet in the semi-final with Rafe Rovers at home, but a 2-1 reverse saw them dumped out. Uh, how did that go? I mean, were you, were you bothered at that point again? Was it all about the league? It, well, I mean, I wanted, I, at the start of the season, I wanted to win it, because I thought, like, again, I was hoping maybe the only time we'll ever be in, in the mm. cup, do you know what I mean? We'd be, we'd been in it, but it just started when we got promoted, but I don't remember it, we never won it. And I thought, you know, it'd be good to to be able to say you've won that trophy as well, to add to everything else. But of course, by yeah. the by the time that came around, the title race was fully on, and, and the oh. brief game was midweek, and we um yeah we it was a it was a it was a reserve team that went out um that night. We we're a wee bit unlucky actually. I think they they got a penalty at the end. It was probably quite soft, but it wasn't the focus, and I wasn't that bothered by that point. And right. you know, it might have been that those you know that extra game for the final, moving a game onto midweek, might have been just. You know, it might have been just one game too many, and it might we might not win the league. So, it wasn't it wasn't the big deal. Do you know what I mean? That it wasn't what we were trying to get. Yeah, yeah. So, so Kelly finished the championship season with twenty wins, seven draws, and nine defeats from the thirty six matches. Fifty goals scored, twenty seven conceded. Goal difference of twenty three and sixty seven points. Two more than our bro, who was in second place, and promotion back to the Premiership at first time to of asking. So your thoughts on the season, right? You've kind of been pretty clear. I mission achieved, I think. Huh? Yeah, that was. I mean, but you, you said that sixty-seven points. Steve Clark's team got sixty-seven points in the Premiership. Um, you know, two seasons earlier when we finished third. Ah, so yeah, you yeah. put that in context, right? It's 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 a not the best season really, but it was nice. We I'd never been to Palmerston before. We went down to Queen of the South, going to Morton, going to you know mm. these grounds that, that you don't get to go to, getting the the derbies against against the United. Sorry and we did. We had we had a game down there where we were three 0 up in like fifteen minutes, and that was great. But on the whole, mm. it was very much. It wasn't that interesting a season. It wasn't an exciting season, and ultimately it was just about getting back up. And some folks say, "Oh, you know, it's better down in the second tier and all that." I didn't feel that to be honest. Uh, Shut that idea. Right? No idea again. No, I'd rather be rather be up, <laughs> up here. Uh, good man, good man. Right. So that season. Um, as to be expected, with McInnes kind of coming in in January, this is this is his chance to overhaul the squad. So once again, with Kamala, like I see today, a massive amount of people, right? So here I go. I'll take a big deep breath. So outs, Tommy Brindley left for Forfa, Ewan Devaney and Justin Devaney both signed for Air Unions. Colin Doyle joined Bradford. Brandon Hoinstrup signed for Cambridge United. Stephen McGinn departed for Falkirk. Jason Nathsmith joined Queen's Park. George O'Connor signed for Stranraer. Ben Hughes to East Kilbride. Harry Brown to Dumbarton. Ross Smith left for Oven Meadow. Michael McMullen to Hurlford United. James Fitzpatrick to East Stirlingshire. Ewan Murray departed for Hartlepool. They all departed on free transfers or end of contracts. Now, an interesting one, I'd never really heard of this guy. Charlie MacArthur, the club's 17-year-old young defender, departed the club for Newcastle United for an undisclosed fee. Charlie had made his debut the previous season and had actually captained Scotland's under-17s at this uh, summer's Euro Championship. So that's a great move for him. But tell us about him, because he's not, he's not a name that I, I, I well, knew about, mate. We, we can't tell you much either, because he played in, yeah. he played in, he played in th- I think, three Challenge Cup games, and then his first uh, league game was in the last game of the season against Braith Rovers. Uh, it, it was okay. He got subbed at half time because he was probably a bit not over audience. So he's a boyhood Kelly fan, and he, but right. he probably on on that day was probably um, wanting more time than he could get in the championship. We'll put it that way. But he's meant to be a very classy defender, and this is probably. I mean, you'll have seen it with Celtic. I think it was Ben Doak was the guy that went down to Liverpool. You can't hold on to your young players for any length of time. You basically don't even get to see them, and it was more or less the same with him. So I think I, I, I think. Everyone had high hopes for him, but ultimately he could have left, he could have left on a on a you know one of these development fee things. But um, so the club basically got an offer and, and had to accept it. There's a bit of you know future money if he does well and all that. But do, do you know how a, much you got? I, I, was, I think we'd heard it was something. It was like two or three hundred grand, but I don't know that for sure. But that's kind of the compensation money would have been like that, but like would have been two hundred or something. I think this is true, but 
um, if because we can agree the deal, we, we had a bit more control over what else could get chucked into it. So it's it, you know what you know what it's like you're you're not getting what they could be worth. But as, you know I was Stephen Naismith maybe one of the best youth players that we produced in my time. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. if it was now he wouldn't have played a game for Kelly before he was you know away down the road to England and. That's the difference. We got two million quid for him eventually when we sold him, but you're just not getting that chance now. So, yeah, he, like, I can't tell you a lot about him as a player except he's highly right. rated. And he, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a name I'll kind of keep an eye out for. You just hope he doesn't go down and disappear and he ends exactly. up back up the road, then you. But um, no, it, it's funny. It was years ago, so two thousand and. I think two thousand sixteen. I was over in Munich. Me and the, me and the wife were over in Munich just for a wee weekend break and we go and tour with a load of hard jerk split fans of all people and they were kind of bemoaning the fact well we're at a stage where clubs just take your young guy before we even see them and at that point we we weren't that wasn't happening to us and now it's happening and he's fucking right it's frustrating man these young guys and and the, you, you can't you can't really grudge them up because it's generally life changing money for these guys do you know what I mean it's so, exactly but, but it's still it's still fucking frustrating. Um, right, so Curtis Lyle and Kyle Connell departed the club for loans at EK and Wraith Rovers, respectively. Finally, Chris Butt left the club and retired from football. Burke has since returned to the club as a reserve coach. He was a good player for Kaman at Chris Burke, yeah? Yeah, I think he was about 35 when we signed him and you thought, you know, this is, you know, one of uh, Lee McCullough you know? washed up pals. And, but he was, uh-huh. he was one of the best players I've seen play for us and... Even last season, even that Arbroath game you mentioned, he he came on as a sub in the last kind of 20 minutes and turned that game. I personally would like to have seen him stay on as a player, but I think McInnes had made it kind of clear to him, look, I want to keep you here as a coach, but I think the plane's maybe not, you know, you're not going to get a chance to play. So he originally said, you know, maybe go and have a look around for a club, but he obviously decided he wanted to be back. I think he's he's developed a real kind of affinity for Kelly and he's really, he does enjoy it, so... He's, he's retired for now, but he is playing. I think he's going to be playing with the reserve team. So right. I, I, I'm not convinced that we've seen the last of him somehow. <laughs> right, so in comments, Alan Power made a return to the club after a year at St. Nunn. Young midfielder Keir McEnroy, who departed Celtic and signed of, uh, on at Kelly, uh, like after he said, playing for Derby Rivals Air last season. Midfielder Liam Donnelly was picked up from Motherwell, along with Welsh defender Joe Wright from Doncaster Rovers and Gary Woods, backup keeper who was signed just after the release from Aberdeen. The club also grabbed Zach Heman and loan from Middlesbrough again after he starred in the Exeter Kelly last season. Jordan Jones is another who, who returns to the club, joining on loan from Wigan Athletic. Jones has played for Rangers, Sunderland, Wigan in last season St Murn before uh, returning to Rugby Park. Young defender Lewis Mayo signed for the season on loan for Rangers. The 22-year-old has played in the Championship for Party this and family on loan over the past couple of years. And Ryan Alabiosu. A 20-year-old right back was signed a loan from Arsenal for the season. And then on Friday, the club added Jared Dorset on loan from Redden. The 20-year-old 20, the 20 made his debut yesterday against Rangers. Now, there's the obvious guys there that I know, like all the guys who played in Scotland and stuff like that. I'd be interested to hear what you've got to say about Kieran McEnroy. And from the highlights that I've watched, the boy for Arsenal looks looks like a decent player, man. He looks like he's got something about him. I, I wasn't at we played Stenhouse Muir in the League Cup. I was actually I was actually in Italy for work, so I wasn't at the game and all I heard they only played forty five minutes and all I heard was this guy that's one of the best debuts I've ever seen. Of course it's right. against Stenhouse Muir, but just, just absolutely flying up the up the right uh, the right wing the whole time is from, from full back, from wing back. Very quick, very direct. Final ball maybe needs a bit of work, but he's he's the sort of player that we could have done with last season, just a bit of excitement. No, he's not not everyone not everyone kind of thinks of him, but but Stephen O'Donnell when he played for Kelly was one of the best fullbacks I've seen in terms of being constantly up and down the flank, constantly an attacking threat, and he was one of my favourite players for in that in that kind of period. And mm-hmm. it took a while to replace him, but this guy might finally be one that you think you know he's he's kind of doing the same sort of thing. So I've got high hopes for him. He, he was really good against Dundee United in the um, the opening day as well. And then I mean it's a different game against Rangers at Ibrox, right? So not judging too much on that because we we have had the ball. 
Right. Well, that, we'll, we'll come to the games in a minute. So, so we, were you happy with your signings? Were you happy with the summer? I mean, did you, did you just get rid of the guys you needed to get ready? And did you, I mean, I suppose bringing guys like power back and stuff like that. And and then uh, we kind of laugh at the coming back last year as well. It was like, the old, the old team are back. The old, the old team are yeah. back. <laughs> Partly, I mean, a lot of the guys Tommy Wright signed were on two-year deals, and a lot of those guys were maybe not not necessarily right up to it. So there's a few players still hanging about. Um, Dylan McGowan, who we signed, the Australian centre back, right. not really, he's not really up to this level. He wasn't really up to the championship with us, to be honest. He's still got a contract. Um, our captain from last season, Chris Stokes, unconvincing. I think he would maybe be all right as an option Premiership, but. He's under contract. We'd probably we'd probably like to empty him. Lee Hodson, um, another one of that nature. Mm-hmm. So there are guys still around that I think, if it was up to McInnes and he's had the option, he would have just let them all leave. Mm-hmm. So I think part of our business has been about well, with that in mind, let's make sure we've got. I think he'll be happy to just stay up this year. I think that's the bare minimum. I think we'll be high, aiming a bit higher than that, to be honest. But some of that's about let's get to next summer, get all the the remaining championship players off the books and really rebuild from there. It looked like it was going that way, but the last couple of weeks, some of the guys we've brought in, it does it does look quite positive. I really like um I really like Lucalo Bioso. The guy Dorset that, that you mentioned didn't have the best game um in his debut, but he comes with pretty decent pedigree. It was League Two it's in England. Hard but it's a hard one going to books in your debut in it. Exactly, but he, he came. He, I think he, he was one of the better players in um, English League Two last season. That's not a good level, but as a young guy to be able to play pretty much every week, I think it was Rochdale. That's that's a good sign. And McEnroy, you mentioned, I am really impressed with him. I think he's, uh, right. yeah, I think he started the season as a left wing back. I don't think that's his position, but again, we're still we've still got business to do. Um, but he's just so direct. Everything's positive. Everything's forward. His passing's really crisp. He's really quick. And he likes a hit from distance. I liked I like what I saw last season and even more so this year. And I, I actually think he'll be one that as the season goes on, he'll he'll start to kind of people will start to notice him. They'll notice him anyway because he's baldy and he stands out quite uh, quite <laughs> obviously when you watch the games. But I think people will start to sit up and take notice a wee bit as the season goes on. Um he, he's a big uh I've got big hopes for him, I think, out of all of them. Um who else? I mean Power coming back. We know what we're getting from Alan Power. He's uh, uh other other clubs fans probably love to hate him, but he's uh, he's, he's aggressive. He's better on the ball than people think he is, and he's you know he's a winner. He's a guy that will get you points from you know from from leading the team and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that was good. Jo- Jones has never really found a club anywhere else since he left us. I think yeah. he obviously didn't leave under the best circumstances with his. Uh, I was his, laughing his... when you when you resigned him in loan. I, I, I clocked your tweets and I was like, oh, I'll get I'll get his opinion on that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't I don't mind. I mean, you you make make fun of the guy and you have a go at him and you you have you know have a dig at him when he leaves, but at the same time, the reason the reason he got a move to Rangers in the first place was because he was he was doing extremely well for us and if he can He's a Rangers man as well, eh? Well I, it's hard to tell because he grew up in he grew up in the North East England. I think I think he maybe played up to that once once right. he went there to try and yeah. but nonetheless he probably is and but if we can get I think he's probably lost a wee bit of his way since then. But he was so exciting to watch, so direct, so quick. And if we can get a bit of that back, you know, we don't need them to be doing it every week. We just need a player who wins you a game here and there. That's what we are looking for. It's not, it's different to Celtic, right? You need guys that are more or less every week delivering the goods to win your games, your creative players. We need a guy that, you know, if we win one win in every three games, that'll keep us up comfortably. So we just need a guy that pops up with these moments. And I think Jones can do that. It'd be, it'd be interesting to watch McEnroy. I've got to say, I mean, he's he's one I'm looking forward to seeing this weekend, just to see his progression because he was very highly regarded with Celtic, and and I was quite surprised when. But I suppose you get to an age, and if you're not going to break in, it's best him actual his career flourishing. So I really hope he does well for these. Um, right, so let's look at the rest of the squad, right? And my ignorance is overwhelming here, so I apologise for that, right? So th- th- I'm looking at the squad. Kyle Lafferty, obviously, I hate the guy, I've got to say. I, I don't use the word hate quite a lot, but 
he's he's on the hate list. Uh, all he saw was top goal scorer last season and he scored goals for Ross County in the Premiership before. Ash Taylor's a guy I remember for Aberdeen and he's obviously scored a couple of goals this season. And then there's Scott Robinson, is also a guy... I know he played with you guys before, but I remember with Livingston and stuff like that. I remember him being a, a pretty good, reliable Scottish SPL Premiership player. So, who else am I missing? Who else should I be looking forward? Apart from the guys you've already touched on, who who's the guys? Is is there any young guys in your squad to know that you think, by the way, he's got a good chance of progressing and, and having a good career? Um, I mean, there's a few. The goalkeeper you meant, you kind of touched on earlier, Hemming. Mm-hmm. Um, he he was fantastic last season on loan from right. from Middlesbrough. Um, a bit of a penalty expert. He won't be playing this weekend, though. He's, he's uh, out injured, so he's probably out injured till August. So we've got our backup keeper, right. Sam Sam Walker's in, but he's all right. Um, back 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 three. Um, so he'll probably play three at the back. The, the other back three, Taylor, the guy right is playing on the right hand side of the defence. He looks pretty decent. Hearts were looking at him and obviously decided against him, but he's quite. He, he probably wouldn't be anywhere near us, but he'd been out for a whole year. hasn't played the, hadn't mm. played the game for a year. I, I quite like the look at him. Mayo will probably play on the other side. Um, so the, in terms of young guys that could be of interest, like Fraser Murray is a he was a Hibs youth player. Right. Kind of had some games with them and and didn't look great. And then he came back. He came to us and he didn't make the best start. I would say he just looked a bit lost. But since mm-hmm. McInnes came in, he's kind of turned him into a wing back. He was he's quite direct. He's quite strong and he, he runs a lot. And He's been pretty good as a wing back in the championship. He's not actually um he's been in and out of the team this season, but I think that's been about rotation and getting to know the other guys as well. But I wouldn't be surprised if he starts the Celtic game. Um, right. and I think he's one that can be a match winner on his day because he's quite um he's quite direct and got a wee bit of skill. I mean, it's it's always hard to tell. He's be, he, he looked he looked really good against championship defenders. That's obviously a bit of a challenge to then go up against Juranovic. Mm-hmm. It's not quite the same thing, but <laughs> he's uh, he's interesting. The middle of the park, not a lot of football there now. Um, might change, but it's uh, it's power and Donnelly and Polworth and these guys. Rory McKenzie, who, who you'd be familiar with at least, he's played with us a long time. Runs about a lot, so I think the the excitement's going to come in the flanks really. And then um, as you right. see, La. and and to be honest, I would have had a similar opinion to you. I laughed before he came to us in terms of. <laughs> But he's actually, he's a dickhead, is he? Exactly, but but even at that, like he's been very good with the supporters and all that. Do you know what I mean? The guy that kind of you know signs the autographs and does all that stuff, which I think isn't what I'd expected for. I'd expect him to maybe think he was too good for us. Do you know what I mean? And be looking down, but he's not been like that. So maybe maybe finally at thirty five or whatever age is, he's he's uh, he's found a bit of humility. Who knows? But, but not to be honest, you, no. You look you look where he's played and and the teams he's played for and stuff like that. He's had some career in the big laugh for him. He's, he's only 34, but Palermo, Sion, Norwich, Rangers, Sunderland, Regina, Hearts. I mean, he's the, had a decent career, man. The Palermo one's funny because I think he won their player of the season and Dybala was at them at the same time. That's right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you just, uh, But no, he's been, he's been very popular. He's, he's, uh, it'll be interesting. He, he was really good in the Premiership the last time he was here, you know, the second half of the relegation season, but it'll be interesting to see how he does for the full year. Uh, he's, he's somebody who certainly, I mean, every time we play against him, he, he either he's either woeful or tremendous. Uh, there doesn't seem to be no. a, by the way, he had a, he had a decent game there. He's either, he is murder polis or I hate that fast. <laughs> um, right, brilliant. Right, so that, that's that's great, mate. So let's take a look at the, the game so far this season. Right, So the League Cup has seen a better start, but I noticed that Hibs have stole your plan from last season um, and they fucking the registered the player thing. But So a 3-1 win over Fraserburgh. A penalty defeat to Party Thistle after a one-each draw was followed by a good 3-0 win over Montrose and you finished off with a 4-1 win over Stenhouse Muir at home. That means Kelly finished second place to Thistle with 10 points and you've secured yourself a lovely wee away, away tie with Hearts on the 31st of August. So the, good, good luck with that one. Um, right, so the league's now two games in. Opening day, one-each draw with Dundee United after an Ash Taylor 91st minute equaliser, was followed by that home tie, uh, the away tie with Rangers, which Rangers won 2-0, two second half goals. So, you can talk about the League Cup if you want. I mean, the League Cup groups, 
bedding in new guys, having a look at them and stuff. I watched, I watched some of the highlights so that I can find about it because I think it was a uh, Fraserburgh game I watched on somebody's mobile phone. I don't know what I was watching earlier. Um, but he's looked comfortable enough coming through the group. Now, obviously, the penalty defeat's a bit of a blow, but still, you go through. But the Dundee United game, to me, and again, I'm watching on highlights, looked like an itchy peachy game. You've been undone with a great goal. And then Ian Hartz is sent off. And to get that last minute, I can expect you were happy. However, when they've got a man doing and you've then got all the play, you're kind of frustrated not to get three points, I would say. Yeah, yeah we, I think we were the better team in that game. Mm-hmm. It was interesting because I was kind of wondering, you know, with, with pre-season, the uh, League Cup was good. But you are kind of thinking, you know, this is us playing Premiership teams. How are we going to be? You mentioned the Scottish Cup game against them last season where we matched them, but they were the better team. And it was always kind mm-hmm. of, they had that extra quality to beat us. Whereas we were going against them this time and we more or less outplayed them for the first half. They were a bit better in the second until the red card. And if we'd lost that game, it would have been really frustrating. And it was really important to get that point because the the next two games, we obviously played Rangers and then we're playing you. Good chance we lose both of those. And I think to start the season with three defeats, you start worrying. Mm -hmm. So just even Mm -hmm. getting that point on the board, you're a wee bit happier. And it was the least we deserved for that game. Um, And... um, Big Taylor, obviously, it was a lovely goal as well. Right. And then yeah, yesterday against Rangers, you're, you're kind of going. I mean, uh, we were, I, were, I saw a Rangers fan moaning that uh, our goalkeeper was time wasting after four minutes. So that that kind of that kind of shows you the type. Of, <laughs> I think we would have been happy to escape with a point, but um, it's always a hard place um, place to go and all that. And were you, were you at the game yesterday? I wasn't at the game yesterday. Um, I'd, <laughs> I, I get it was thirty one quid, and I was like, you know, if I if I'm picking and choosing my games, then that's not when I'm I'm choosing. <laughs> um, did, so, did you manage to watch it? I've seen bits of it. Um, I, I kind of I, I often give up once we're uh, once we're getting comfortable beating a game like that. But, but obviously we we hung in, so it was only it only went it only went off at uh, Morelos scoring with five minutes to go. But yeah, we we didn't have a lot of the ball. We didn't have a lot of chances. Mm-hmm. To be honest, Rangers didn't. I think they only had four shots in target the whole game. That's, that, that, that's why I was I was kind of putting you there because I'm, I watched the highlights and then I looked at the stats and Rangers, I mean, like you said, come up, they didn't show you, I think you had one shot, uh, I think it was Boy Armstrong, was it? Who, Daniel Armstrong had the shot, but he's obviously never had a lot. But the goal, the first goal you conceded will break your heart, wasn't it? I mean, that tackle puts the ball right down, do you know yeah, what I mean? And then it knocks it you in. Need a bat, so you need think, a bat. So no, no, I'm just saying, that you, you think if you'd held on that wee bit longer, then you never know. I mean, Rangers did look a bit toothless at times, I've got to say, yeah? until Morelos comes on, because we, we know what that wee bum's about. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, scored, uh, he scored 12 goals against us now. He scored more goals against us than anybody else. So we'll, we'll see yeah. about him. Uh, day, the, guys. the opposite of what he does to you, when he just he, he seems to, to lose his ability to score. But um, nah, it was one of the games, and I was hoping we might catch them cold in between the, you know, between the, the European tie. You think that's maybe the good time to play them? Because especially after what happens midweek, they are probably get both eyes on, you know, staying yeah. in the Champions yeah. League. But problem is they've got enough squad depth that they can make the changes they made, and and they've still got better players than we do. And, and I I don't mind the way we played. I think it's kind of how we're going to have to play this season in these big games. But it, if if they get a bit of luck or if you just someone loses concentration, that's what's going to happen. And we've not got as good a squad as you know. Steve Clark's team constantly got results in these games, but we've not got as good players as that now. So you're always going to um, you're just going to it's just harder to get the results. These are not the games that define our season. Um, they're they're yeah. good ones to get the points, and it's the same with the one coming up on Sunday. Hope to get something. The perform the the style maybe be a wee bit different being at home, but it's. A game we are we're going to expect to to have to defend a lot and right okay well I'll take that absolutely amazing segue you just gave me and we'll go rolling right into Saturday, uh, Sunday's game so the game's at twelve o'clock on Sunday on the telly for everybody happy days imagine that eh? putting football on the telly for people but um so we, you you touched on it earlier so the last two games you've played you've actually played with three in the back. So I don't know if McInnes is kind of into that. I noticed in the group stages you played a couple of games before. You, you, you've kind of presumed your defence so far. So so tell me, how do you think you'll set up formation-wise? And how do you think the team will set up? 
Do you think it'll be a defensive or is it that wee bit more? Win the midfield, hopefully your wide guys can get you something. I think that'll be it. I think we we basically, it was basically kind of parking the bus at Ibrox yesterday. I think it'll be a wee bit more front foot because, again, you're playing in front of your own fans. You've got a wee bit more responsibility mm-hmm. to do that. Um, I think we'll, I think it will be five at the back. As I said, I think Walker will be in goals. He's the, he's the um, second choice, but he's pretty. He's he's far better than the goalkeepers we had when we get relegated uh, the last time around, so he's not bad. Um, as I say, Wright, Taylor and probably Mayo will come back in. He was on, He's on loan for Rangers. He could play yesterday. Uh, mm, that's right. uh, so back three there and I think I'll be able to and left wing back's interesting because it could be Murray or it could be McEnroy it depends how he wants to go um, middle of the park power will definitely be in there McKenzie will mm-hmm. definitely be in there and then it'll be one of McEnroy, Polworth, Donnelly it may be Donnelly, Donnelly's not at the best start I think he's been quite slow but he's quite aggressive and you, you can imagine him being you know, the type of you know this kind of game you can imagine wanting him and then Lafferty, Lafferty will definitely play up front and probably Shaw with him. He might change it. He might put, you know, someone like um, Murray in behind that kind of thing. There's a, there's a few options. Jones is one who I think we would like to play in this kind of game, but he's missed the first two with injuries, so I don't know what his situation is. But I would expect on the whole we will be aggressive in the middle of the park, trying to get the ball. I don't think we'll... I just, there will be some long ball, you know, because Lafferty's there and you've got him. But I think we'll be trying to play through the midfield quite quickly, get it out wide and get the pace out wide, get a lot of crosses in and all that sort of thing. Because I think that's how we're going to maybe hurt Celtic. I think it's, it's hard. I've, I obviously didn't see us play against the Postacoglu team and it's a different prospect to a Lennon team. A Lennon team, I think, they, they knew how to win, but they were maybe never that exciting. Maybe you'll tell me differently. But as, a, as to play against, you always thought you had a... You know, if you could do the basics well, you always had a chance. But Postacoglu's team seem to attack you for all angles, and we've not we've not faced that yet. So I don't know how it's going to go and what. But I know <laughs> that if you can, if there's one way you can maybe hurt the Celtic team, it's you know a lot of balls in the box, a lot of crosses, and and you know try and try and either win the headers or just kind of the you know fall to the edge of the box and all of that type of stuff. So that's what I would expect us to try and do um, try and just hang in the game as long as we can hope that you know Celtic get frustrated start start forcing the issue a bit and, and that we can you know see it out that's, that's kind of what I expect I, I would expect um, yeah I'd expect a lot of aggression in the middle I think there'll be a, a we've got a pretty big team now so I think it'll be quite physical um, but I think as much as Celtic have maybe got some smaller guys I don't think I don't think they lack the ability to mix it up. Um, I, would, I would imagine you might play like someone like Jackamakis in this kind of game because he's again someone who can do that as well. I don't know. I don't know what Celtic are going to do, but um, I I am slightly worried about your midfield because I think one of the problems we've had is a wee bit of a lack of um, lack of pace in midfield and a bit inability to you know track runners and all of that stuff are a wee bit slow in there and. That midfield that Celtic Scott is all about getting in those wee gaps and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what I think Katati's injured. So I don't I don't know he did yeah. yesterday, so that's probably good. But you've still got you've still got a million other you know O'Reilly, Turnbull, all these guys that <laughs> that terrify me. So I don't know what to expect, but I, I think <laughs> I think we I think you'll know you're in a game. We'll put it that way, but um, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, right. That, that's perfect, right? So we'll, we'll finish off the kind of chat just by give me your expectations. You you say that McInnes, in fact, let's talk about McInnes for a wee couple of minutes. Are you content that McInnes is a guy to take you back to the level? I mean, your description of kind of trying to get the club stable, get rid of the guys who are wage training you, basically, because we, we all get to that point. You just want them off the books. No harm to them, but you just fucking, you're no good enough. Um, is this a guy who you, know, you can see like four or five seasons with and then like maybe you're, you're getting up to the stage that obviously Clark's the messiah the new but are, are you confident enough that Derek McInnes is a guy that you can build a club with yeah I mean I always amazed we were able to get him to be honest because mm-hmm. I think if he's leaving if he's leaving Aberdeen after all those kind of top four top three finishes I don't think he expected his next job was going to be to take over Kilmarnock in the championship. championship um, he obviously lives somewhat local. I think he lives in the south side, so or Glasgow. So he's probably partly that's helped getting him on board. 
his record speaks for him itself, all right. Yeah, you know, there were some grumbles, but it was grumbles to Aberdeen fans because they weren't winning the cup finals that he got them to, or that they weren't doing well in Europe after they'd finished in the top. And that's Aberdeen, they've got different expectations to us. If he can finish in the top four every season with us, then he's, he's only a winner, he'll be our best manager ever. But that's not what our target is now. I, I think he knows what he's doing, he's building a squad, he says all the right things, he's you know. I wasn't. I don't think he did that well last season. To be honest, I think he did enough, but I think he probably was surprised by a lot of the guys he brought in because he brought in a lot of guys in January and most of them weren't good enough. Um, but I think he he knows this level a lot better, and I think the mm-hmm. signings he's made so far look pretty good. I don't think we'll be that exciting this season. I think we'll probably finish something like eighth, seventh, or eighth. Um, we, there's definitely a space in the top six for us because I think there's a lot of poor teams but going forward if he was to stay our manager I would be very happy uh, my my worry is that you know you could easily get two years down the line and a bigger club comes in and being realistic he's he's not he's not got a connection to Kilmarnock that would make him stay there for any length of time so that's the only concern I have but no in terms of do I think he's the right guy yeah absolutely I think the the board did really well to go out and identify him and get him. Um, I'm sure he's I'm sure he's been paid handsomely for it, but he's um he's done all the right things so far. Um, and if he yeah, again if he stays our manager for the next four or five years, I'll be delighted. The the Stevie Clark factor does sit over it, but in a positive way as well that it can be a springboard to. I mean, the Scot the current Scotland manager came from Kamara, whatever way people don't, might know right him, but. No, I mean that's that's a factor, and Derek McInnes must be going well. If you get it right down there, then there's there's definitely progression to be made. If, if he wants it that way, but um, right, Craig, that's absolutely perfect, mate. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, before we finish up, you want to tell anybody on social media? You want to uh, push out the plenty twenties uh, plenty thing again? Yeah, so you can just follow us twenties plenty school SEO Scotland because um, the, the English the English have already taken over the. 20s plenty, so 20, 20s plenty SEO Scotland, um, and yeah, just, just get on there, I'll, I'll probably be cranking up a wee bit, I'm just starting to, you know, we're now just trying to let people know what it's, kind of, what it's about, what we're trying to get, what, what the aim is, and then once there's a bit of a follow in there, take it forward, try and get, you know, some media interest, you try and get mm-hmm. a bit of dialogue with clubs, because I don't want this to seem like it's like me or us as a fans against clubs. That's not what I want it to be like. I want to chat to them because the clubs will have good reasons a lot of the time for, for charging what they charge. and or, or at least they'll think they've got good reasons, if you know what I mean. They're not doing it because they think, oh, these mugs will pay any amount of money. But you, you, <laughs> if we can engage any dialogue and try and convince people, that's the first step. Obviously, if that doesn't go well, that's when you start thinking, well, what other actions are there? Um, Mm-hmm. That it can be taken, but I'm hoping at least to get a bit of dialogue with people, get chatting and see what's happening. So you follow it the now, tell people about it, and if we go for there, um, hopefully we can get somewhere, but it's, it's not going anywhere. Do you know what I mean? It's not disappearing. I'll, I'll be in Good people's man. ears um, through the season, letting them know how much, you know, how much every fans have been charged every week and all that, because I think... A lot of the media, they don't, and it's not bad, that's their, their job, but they don't pay to get into these games. They don't realise that suddenly folk have been asked to, you know, empty their pockets of more and more money every week. So I think just even that wee bit of awareness of the fact that we are being suddenly asked to pay, you know, maybe up to a third more than we had been before, that it's a lot of money. So um yeah, get get following that. You can follow I'm I'm Craig underscore Kelly. If you're a Celtic fan, you probably not enjoy it. If you're a fan it's no, no, I'll t- I, I think you're a good follow me and I'm not saying that just because I'm going I like that. I, I like it when people kind of tell home truths to Celtic as well because generally we agree with it, but we'll still call you a prick. You know what I mean? But um, I, well, I, I was getting, getting it, getting it for Hibs fans today, so we'll, but, but uh, I, I'm, I'm an equal opportunities. Uh, I'm equal opportunities. I know you every support, including all yeah. No, I think you're a good follow, mate, and I would recommend everybody kind of gives you a go. But um, once again, mate, thank you for taking your time on this Sunday evening to do this for me. Um, as I always say, after Sunday, hope your season goes well. <laughs> it's, it's like likewise. Well, I don't even know if I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. Thanks again. Cheers.